Hi, welcome to the Crafts Channel. I've got another demonstration for you today and it's using the Brother Scan and Cut SDX 2200D and their new rotary auto blade. You get the kit with the rotary auto blade and essentially it is a 360 swivel circular blade which makes it an absolute dream for cutting fabric, felt, denim, leather, and it just pops into the cartridge holder as your normal blades do. Now the kit does come with an activation card so you can then select things from the kits library like a, there's a plique alphabets and there's some nice three-dimensional projects and some quilting designs. You can select designs from the library on your scan and cut SDX or you can scan your own designs such as this reindeer design, which I'll actually put in a PDF link in the description below for you so that you can cut your own one out. So you can make a little purse for Christmas. You know, if you're in the habit of giving money for Christmas, it's quite nice to just present it in something that is a little bit more Christmassy. This one's made from leather offcuts from an old armchair with a snapper and then decorated with holly leaves cut from felt, also using the rotary blade and gemstones. This one here is made from felt and it's personalized with a little headdress of letter beads. And this one I've done from metallic serval paper. Now, I would not recommend that you cut anything paper-based, even if it's called serval paper, don't cut anything paper-based with your rotary blade. If you're going to use that predominantly for fabric, you may find that, as with your best dressmaking scissors, paper will blunt your blade quicker than you want it to. So this kind of stuff can actually be cut with the normal standard blade. But I just want to show you the versatility of the pattern. So I'm going to cut this from felt. I would suggest you find a decent quality felt that's got about a 40% wool content in it. Give it a quick press. You don't need to press it too much. And then brother recommend that for any kind of fabric, you use a low tack mat. Really, I think so that when you remove your things from the mat, they, it's easier for them to remove. No, it's easier for you to remove them even. So just lay your piece of felt fabric on the mat, tamp it down, and then for extra security, I tend to use a rubber brayer, which I think is actually meant for inking up lino cuts, but that's a whole other demonstration, just to make sure it's got good tack on the mat. And then, as I say, I have scanned my design and I have it here on my design mat. Now, you've got a bottom purse shape and then you've got two reindeer head shapes because you need, this bit is the bottom purse, that's one reindeer head, this is another reindeer head. Now, because I am not particularly computer literate, um, I haven't cut you this half a reindeer piece. You'll have to do this yourself. But if you, if you scan the design that's on the sheet and then you take this one reindeer and you mirror image it before you lay it down, it does mean that if you're cutting something from leather, you can cut it all in one pass. And then when you put the two pieces of leather together, it matches up exactly. If you don't mirror it, because this has been hand drawn, you might find there's a slight discrepancy. But have a look at the template, and if you're a whiz with a computer, you can even that out yourself. I'm just warning you that I'm not a whiz with a computer. So I'm going to load my mat, and the machine knows that it's got a rotary blade in there. Just OK it. And set it to cut. And this is going to take about four minutes because what the blade will do is it won't trace around this shape in one fell swoop. Where you've got tricky angles, rather than the blade trying to turn itself, you know, 300 degrees to continue the cut, 
it will take itself away from it, move the blade and then come back to where it was. It looks disjointed while it's being cut, but there's a very good reason for it. It means that your felt doesn't get rucked up under that blade as it's turning. So we'll just let this cut. And in a minute when it's finished, I'll show you what you do next. There we go, and we're done. It's finished cutting. Oh, unload your mat. And then all being well, you can carefully peel away your background pieces of felt, like so. And you know me, I'm not going to throw that away because there's loads of usable felt in there for other applique projects. And then just use your spatula to ease the pieces off the mat. So we have one half of our reindeer and the other half of our reindeer. And they are mirror images, like I said, because I, this is hand drawn, I can't guarantee that if you put one on top of the other, it will be an exact match. As you can see, like my antler is outly sli out slightly there. But if I turn it over, they match up perfectly. So before you fix them together, what you need to do is you need to cut the nose out. And you can cut the nose really any size you like. I'm going to use a, a white gel pen because it shows up much better on felt. Take the top part of your purse and then just draw a curve to make the nose of your reindeer and simply cut that out with a pair of scissors. Now obviously doing it this way I am wasting a bit of felt. If you uh, take our template and um, scan it into your own computer you can chop this down yourself. So you've got the nose of your reindeer and then the bottom half of the purse you will notice is wider than the reindeer itself. And the reason that is, is so that when you sew it together on the edges, you've actually got a bit of give there. So you can put a bunch of pound coins in there, some sweets, something like that. And it will make it pop out at the front rather than bagging the whole thing. But we're going to fit the snap fastener first of all. So if you just lay your front against your back and check it's central and then you just pop the front of your head over the top and you grab a pointy stick tool and you make a mark say in the center I am just going to check that that is in the center make a hole in the center there for this piece that goes straight through to the actual purse front piece but not necessarily the back and then let's have let's have Rudolph the orange nose reindeer um, if you've got some of these snap fasteners these are brilliant um, if you don't have them you can still do a snap fastening nose with normal Sew on press studs, perhaps topped with a large button to give the effect of a nose. But with these um, sort of plier fix press studs, you just clamp it in place. And it's easier to do this first before you sew your whole reindeer together. Just because then you don't have to put your pliers inside the, the finished purse. Give that a good clamp down. So they will sit together. And then the next thing you do is you glue your 
pocket of your purse to your background. Now I'm going to use a fabric glue and I'm going to just run a thin line around the edge. You don't want too much, you don't want it oozing out from the sides. But what you do want to do is you want to fix it at the bottom centre first, then fix the sides like so and just put a couple of little sewing clamps on the sides there and then just ease the rest of it round. So you've got, as I say, some room in there to actually put a gift. And for extra security, what I would do is, as I've had done on this one here, I would top stitch that. Um, very simple to do that. Let's just find um, a thread that kind of matches the nose. Normal six strand embroidery thread. Find the middle of your piece and separate the strands. So you have two and then just pull them out from each end. So they don't tangle up. Not the end of your thread. And when you start, if you start inside here and bring the needle up so your knot is hidden and then just go through here a couple of times to add strength to that stress point because the top of your per the, the top of the pocket of your purse will be under more stress than anything else if it's continually opened and closed and then you can just seal it up with a simple over sew stitch taking care not to um, get your reindeer's ears in the way in fact actually I'm just going to pin my reindeer's ears out of the way and then you can very quickly just whip stitch around the edge so I'm just finishing sewing around the edge of the pocket of the purse and when you get to the end again like you did at the beginning put a couple of stitches through the purse at the top at that stress point and then if you just knot that on the back in a neat knot. It's pulled quite tight. Whenever I try and do a neat knot, you know I always get my thread tangled. And then just to hide the end, I would run that back through between the layers of felt and just pop it out a bit further down. I always tend to do that with my ends of thread because I figure even if my knot is not the greatest, if I've got a long tail of thread, the chances of it coming undone are very slim. So there's your pocket. And then we'll glue the head part on. I'm just going to trim off that bit of white ink that's annoying me. And you could sew around the antlers as I have done on this one here for Amelia. It gives quite a nice finish. If you've got the time to do it, then I would thoroughly recommend that you do it because it does give a nicer finish. If you're doing these perhaps for a school fete or you've got, you know, a dozen grandchildren that you each want to give one to and you don't have the time, it's not imperative. The most important part is the pocket where any gift will be held but just use a decent fabric glue and dot all the way around the borders of your ears and your antlers trying to avoid getting it on your fingers as you do so and then I would suggest you match up your popper nose to start with and then lay one ear down lay the other ear down. Now this fabric glue that I've used does actually give a very good bond. I'm sure I read somewhere that for a, for a definite permanent bond you can give that another press with an iron. 
but I won't do that now. But then the other thing I was just going to say is, if you mark a couple of points here for eyes, and again, just get yourself two strands of embroidery thread, make a knot in the end, just unpop your nose, And where you made the mark, just put your thread in and out. Trim off the tail of that knot. And then if you get yourself some tiny little buttons, these are about, oh, I think four millimeters in diameter. Little black buttons that I seem to use for everything. You can just sew a pair of tiny eyes. To the front of the head. And there you go, Rudolph the bright pink orange nosed reindeer. To go along with our little reclaimed armchair leather reindeer, the sewable paper, and the personalised purple one from Elia. Because reindeers don't always have to be brown. So they're cut with the Brother Scan and Cut um, FGX machine. I'll put a pattern in the description below for you to download and you can either um, print it off, scan it into your machine, however you would normally transfer things to a cutting machine. And um, I'll also put a link for some information, more information about the Scan and Cut FDX range and their rotary blade auto kit. I think that's all I need to tell you. I hope that uh, you have a very good Christmas and you're looking forward to it and that you come back and see us again. If you get a chance, if you could subscribe, that would be great because we've got new videos going up all the time and then we can notify you when we've got a new one. But also have a look through our back catalogue because there's a lot of Christmas ideas for you to DIY your own festive season this year. And um, we'd love to hear your comments. So please drop us a line on the channel and I'll try and get back to you if I can. In the meantime, keep safe. Thank you for watching and we'll see you soon. If you've been inspired to create, please share your makes with us in the comments section below. And if you've enjoyed videos by The Crafts Channel, hit the like button. Want to see more of us? Then click subscribe. See you next time.